It is a beautiful early spring day in South Central Alaska. In this type of weather, there's not a cloud in the sky, almost 40 degrees. It puts Alaskans like me in a mood to do things outside. Today, we have a super cool project for you. It is almost birch sap season here in South Central Alaska. That means we're getting ready to tap our birch trees. When we tap the birch trees, we get this beautiful clear nectar that comes out of these trees and you boil it down. And if you boil it down enough, it turns into this lovely dark brown, sweet, delicious syrup all natural straight from the 10 acres on our little homestead well to do that you have to boil that sap down quite a bit and you do that in a few ways you can boil it on your stove with an electric stove but that requires a lot of electricity you can boil it on a propane cooktop but wow that takes a lot of propane so the third way and the more alaskan way especially here in the back country is to build a wood fired boiler and so what we have today is a wood stove kit that we can turn this 55 gallon drum into a boiler. And so the plan is use this kit. This is the door, exit pipe, connector, some legs. And then we have these stainless steel metal pans and these pans will go here. The fire goes inside and it burns the bottoms of these pans, boils this syrup down to where it's finished and ready to eat. Now this is the first movie. I've never done anything like this. So we're learning as we go. I already cut part of this out and we're gonna to continue to cut out and I'll show you the process. So come along with us. Safety is always important on these little adventures. And so gloves, definitely eye protection. When you cut this thing open, it's going to make a lot of sparks. And that makes for good video, but it's quite dangerous. I think the toughest part of this job is this part here, is to set up these boiler trays in the correct area. These are stainless steel cafeteria trays that you would see like at a Piccadilly restaurant or other large public feeding facilities. Quite thin, but perfect to boil sap. If I cut too much, then I've ruined my barrel. If I cut too little, then I have a lot of work to do. I've already made one mistake, and that is I cut too close to this line. And as you can see here, it's separated, so I will have to go back and seal this off before I can use it, because I don't want the smoke coming out. So I'm disappointed in myself in that, but this is a learning experience, and it's all in good fun. And by the way, I have another one of these. If I completely mess this up, then I've got a second one. Okay, super cool, so pretty easy pliers and we're going to bend this metal back and what that does is it's going to give us a lip for that boiler pan to slide into what I'm hoping is this piece will slide pretty easily downward folks this is a sharp edge with sharp metal because we've cut it so you have metal shards everywhere that can get into your skin into your fingers so wear gloves wear arm protection so after we're done setting this up I will take a metal grinder and smooth out all of this. And I think what I'd like to do is wrap these sharp metal edges where the boiler pan sits with, call it rope, it's a material that they line the edges of a cook stove, a wood fired cook stove with, and that will seal it up. All right, so I like that, that's pretty good. Let's test it again. Hey, wow, we're almost in there. Really snug fit, I could not have asked for a better fit. <laughs> A little bit tight. So that is our proof of concept, and I like what I see, and so I'll continue this project. Bend this back just a bit more. We could also cut here and here and bend this in a little bit here, and that'll give us a shelf for that pan to sit, and I think I might do that. So our goal is to set this first pan in here as low as possible. The second pan will cut a little bit shallower and it'll fit higher. And so what happens is one of these pans will be a warmer and then the final pan that sits here, our finisher. And what we'll do is we'll put a tap in the end where we can open up the tap and let the finished syrup drain out. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna cut some tabs in here and bend this down. So this is a reciprocating saw with a metal blade. You know it's a metal blade because of the very fine teeth. And so what we'll do is we'll try to run that saw here and here, here, and here, and then we'll bend that in. So keep your fingers crossed that this works cut through there like butter. That's quick. And to make it easier to fold, I'm gonna make a center cut here and that should fold over. You would think a 55 gallon drum would be tougher than that, but this metal's pretty soft. Shape it the way I want. So we're going to test fit again. Yeah, that fits really good there. I like that a lot. We're gonna cut the other side the same way. Wow. Guys, I am quite pleased with that. So right here along this edge, you can see my, my pan is rubbing up against this. So I need to take my pliers and bend this metal back right here. So this is a better, easier fit. You see, there's a bit of a gap here. There's no gap here. It looks really good around here. 
I think we're gonna call that good. This will be our finishing pan. And so we will put a tap at the bottom in the corner here to drain the sap out. So the next step is to be sure the next one I build is the same level as this one. And the way we do that is with a level. So I'm quite pleased how the rough end means we're basically roughly putting this thing in. We haven't fine tuned it yet. And I'm checking for horizontal level. So everything wants to be square, right? You don't want these pans cocked to one end or the other when you put your feet on. So what we'll do now is measure for the second pan. What I'm going to do is mark where I made my final hole, where I bent that metal in, all I do is follow this line that's right here all the way to the other side. I'm going to check the width of this. So right here looks like a pretty good spot. So if you remember, I said I wanted this pan higher. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go up to about here. Okay, so we're making our second cut, kind of just eyeballing it, roughing it in. I'm cutting it a little bit short because what I want to do is after this cut, I want to fold this metal in to this line here so it sits in, but I want it to be a little taller. We're gonna go all the way down and try to guess across here where we need to stop. Did I go too far? Yes, I did. This thing cuts pretty well, better than I expected. We are making progress, folks, and I'm super excited. So this is what I've done. So the finishing pan as low down as possible, and then the boiler pan, I want to be a little higher up. It looks like I've made a bit of a mistake. It's not too bad. And I'm hoping what I can do is bend back this metal just a bit more. Well, let's see if that helped us at all. Okay, so what I have here is a minor problem. When this goes up like this, it bows out this way, and it's creating a tight spot between this here and here. This is not exactly done by a lot of people. It's not done by some company, so we're kind of just figuring it out as we go here. Okay, so what you can see, what we've done is rolled back this metal some more. We'll continue to do so. making progress that's quite a bit deeper but I want to go some more I want this lip almost touching the edge of the barrel so what I've just learned I can't go anymore because we'll be outside of the limits of this so this is about as far as we're gonna go and we are about an inch and a half from the lip of this and that's not bad that fits quite a bit better right there and you can see we have some gaps right there we're gonna fill those gaps so don't worry about that see what we have fits in there pretty well see I can't go anymore because then this barrel will be on the outside of this metal and I can't have that so this is about as deep as we can go okay so we've been trying to get these trays fitted in and that was the big part of the job and so the trick is to get everything lined up and so I'll use a leveling bubble first line up this tray and I want them all lined up together so we don't have things that look just off and odd okay so that's level there and we've got that level there. So they're in line now. So I'm now going to mark all of these holes. And this is where we will put the bolts. Huh. Not a very good pin. The other thing I have to mark is the holes where this air vent will be. And then the final step will be to cut out the door itself. Well, it's not beautiful. But I think it will do. I think we did okay. We can work with that. That's pretty good. So now I have to cut out my air holes down here. The stove can get air to breathe as it burns the fire. My ears are ringing. <laughs> One more time with this saw, what we'll do is we're going to cut out a rectangle. It goes from here down to here and over back. Well, thank goodness for eye protection or I'd be blind right now from all the sparks flying. Let's see if we have enough power left in this thing to finish this cut. All right, we're making progress. I took a little bit of a break. So we're reaching a milestone here where we're going to put the wood stove door in here. So what we have to do is bolt it in place. So I'm looking for the marks I made to make sure this wood stove door lines up correctly. We'll use this leveling bubble. So that is level. Hey, and that's level. Definitely need a new drill bit or some other type. We're making great progress here. I've got all the bolts in place for the door. That looks pretty good. We have a little bit of a lip of the metal of the barrel, but that doesn't matter. And I can easily come back and cut all that out if I want to. And this is not going to win any beauty contests. <laughs> Level this up. Yeah, that looks really good. 
Let's give it a shot this way. Well, I can do some fine adjustment here. It looks very level on that level. So now I can put the back one in place. So off of this, we'll send up, oh, probably about a six foot tall smokestack with a uh, maybe a spark arrestor and then a rain cap on it. Okay, we're tightening the last of these bolts. Looks like I have one more to put there. Uh oh. <laughs> Folks, I've done something unbelievably dumb. I forgot to drill the hole for the smokestack to come through. <laughs> Uh, so I've got to pull this thing off now. What's gonna have to happen? I can't believe I just did that. Okay, so we have this very large hole saw and we're gonna do our best. Make a nice, round, clean, professional looking smokestack hole. And I really hope this works. Keep your fingers crossed for me on this one. So I'm doing my best to get it lined up as much in the middle as we can. All right, that kicked back and that hurt. And that's very dangerous. I don't know if that dug into me or not. Whew. Okay, we gotta figure out another way to do that. Okay, that's gonna leave a mark. I spun this saw and as soon as it grabbed this metal, it kicked back and I have a mark. You can see my clothes are torn right here. I have a mark from here to here. Oh, it's gonna be sore. <laughs> Rookie mistakes. I know some of you out there that are professional metal workers and welders and the rest are probably really laughing at me. You're like, what is wrong with this idiot? We're gonna try this again on a lower level. Let's see what we can do down here. Whoa, it broke my drill bit. Uh-oh, I thought this was designed for metal, but it might not be. Oh, that's exciting to get this in place. And folks, we only have one major step left, and that is putting in, putting in the feet. This is what the feet look like, and they go underneath, and then we're getting close to getting ready to fire this thing. And we have to make a very, very hot fire to burn out all the paint off of this thing and any toxic fumes that are inside. And we definitely want to do that this evening in this good weather. So this last step of this is important. I guess if I had a plumb bob and I had a way to perfectly know where the straight down is and I could line it up with the, with the smokestack. I suppose another way, if, if I can put my level on the bottom of this thing, yeah, maybe we do it that way. I have an idea. And if we have level here and level down there, then we will know that we are on the same plane, perfectly opposite the smokestack. That little level bubble says it is level. Down there on the smokestack, I was able to put that same bubble. So now they match, just for the record. And my hope is now, if I attach this, it will be perfectly centered. So we have to figure out how to get these in there. I believe I can reach around there pretty easily and get to them. If I had one of you to hold this for me here, that would be really great. This project didn't come with instructions, guys. There's no instructions. Not that I would read them. You know I don't read instructions. You've seen my other videos. One bolt in place, I gotta get the other. I was blessed with long arms for this purpose. Oh, I'm ready to be done with this. Are you guys ready to be done with this? Okay, those feet are in place. So we're gonna put the other one and I'll show you how I did it. Oh. So how we did this is, I look level to all of you, close enough. So on the bottom of this thing, the smokestack is right here. And what I did was I put it here and I pray it's also level, close enough. And so now that I have this one here, what I can do is I can go to the back and make sure this one matches that one. Level there, level there. Now in theory, those should be lined up. This is it, this is the last piece. Hallelujah. And now the moment of truth. We're finished with the construction of this barrel stove. I've installed a smokestack with a rain protector on the roof. I've put mortar and some fireproof rope. I want most of the smoke to go out of this stack and the heat to hit the bottom of these pans. So I did my best to seal that up. So now it's time to start a fire. First step is to get some snow to put in these pans. expecting 50 degree temperatures here in just a few days and that indicates it's time to tap birch trees and that is the whole point of all this so I'm going to cheat when I start this fire because I have that and this is some of the best fire starter that we've ever found in Alaska these it's called fat wood beautiful sight folks we already see smoke coming out of the chimney this is a fun project I've really enjoyed doing this on a beautiful spring day here in South Central Alaska. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. We're definitely gonna share all the tips and tricks that I learned to make this thing. Oh, that's a good sight. We see a lot of smoke there. That's really good. I can hear it crackling quite nicely in there. And if you can see quite the fire happening, and it's gonna make a beautiful hot fire. 
And it looks like with these two holes, plus the vent down here, we get plenty of ventilation and we've got perfect suction and ventilation straight up to the top because the smoke is not coming out through these holes. It's going up through there. We're gonna get a thermometer out here. We're gonna stick the thermometer in this water as it melts the snow. And we're going to track the temperature, see how hot we can get that boiling water. A little bit more firewood, no more snow in there, just ice, I mean, uh, just water. We can see the barrel is changing color because it's getting hot, cleaning off all of the chemicals that are inside and on the outside of the barrel. When I open up this door, you can hear that fire rage. It really feeds it well. That's a good sight. If it boils water, it will certainly boil sap. So what I have is a thermometer, and we're going to set the thermometer in one of these water pans. And so I'm gonna set this here so you guys can see how we do. I'm making the fire in this barrel hotter than we would normally want it, because I'm trying to clean out the barrel. Man, it is hot, I can feel the heat. The thermometer says it is 55 degrees inside of there because I just dumped a bunch of ice in there. It will heat up. We're about an hour in, and I expect this will take several hours to finish this. The temperature gauge says 120 on this front pan, and I have a hunch the back pan might give us a little more heat. So that is the alarm telling us that back pan is a lot warmer than the front pan. The back pan is the boiler. The front pan is the finisher. It's working very well. We are making excellent progress. As you can see, the hottest part of this barrel is where this black is here. It's hotter in the back of this barrel because that's where I shoved all the wood and the fire started back there. So what I'm doing is slowly dragging the hot fire wood to the front of the barrel because I want to clean through heat the front of the barrel as well. So I'm watching that black color progress to the front of the barrel. And that's how I know I'll have a clean barrel that's ready to use to boil birch sap. My neighbor's telling me it's time. My neighbor's getting already, I think he said he got 10 gallons overnight with his just the seven trees that he tapped. So it's time to show you guys how to set up the collection methods. We're going to tap this tree a little above knee high, almost waist high, somewhere right here. And these trees are facing south that hot sun hits these trees and it activates these trees first so the process looks like this first of all we've got to verify that this is a birch tree i know this is a birch tree because of this stuff here the bark that peels off this tree the birch tree sheds its bark as it grows and no it will not harm this tree for us to tap it in any way so we have our little bucket we have a tap we have the feeder tube and we have the lid i have an electric drill and i know exactly how far i want to drill and no further and I'll drill facing south. That sun comes across the top right here, heats up this side of the tree, and it warms up this tree, and that sap starts to flow from the roots of this tree up to the tree leaves. The bucket will sit on the ground like that. And so I have to be sure wherever I tap, I can reach, and that'll reach just fine right about here. And sometimes, as soon as you tap the tree, the birch sap starts flowing. I'm double checking my depth. That looks perfect. Oh, yep, I see it dripping here. That's a really good sign. So I'm clearing out this drill hole I just made. It's frothy and you can see it's wet. It's coming out already. Yay, that's exciting. You don't wanna go so far in and so far deep that you can't pull it out in the fall. Well, actually not in the fall, just after the season's done, I come back and I can plug these holes if I want to help the tree out. So we will Make sure our bucket's clean. So if you're wondering, everything we collect in here goes through a filter before we boil it and then we skim it after we boil it. So here's the tap and here is the syrup or the sap flowing through the line. You can see the dripping happening and it will flow all the way down and into this bucket. If I pull this off, and I can, it's not a problem, you will see it drip. There we go. That's what we're after. I have some more really big, beautiful trees back here. I wanna tap those as well. The question is, can I walk from here <laughs> to there without sinking too far into the snow? We'll give it a shot. Lid tube with spile attached. That'll help. Bucket. What am I missing? Ooh, drill. All right, I gotta find the drill. I'll be right back. Oh. Okay. 
found the drill. Set my bucket in the snow. Sunny, south facing part of the tree is here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it's dripping out of the tree. So I have a treat for you guys. Stick around a little bit with me. We're gonna tap one of these, fill up a cup, and I'll tell you what it tastes like straight from the tree. Tap, tap, tap it in. Where have I heard that before? Look at the drip from this one. I might be having to check these tonight so the bucket doesn't overflow. See the water flowing out. That, folks, is what we're after right there. Drip by drip, this bucket will fill up and we boil it down into a delicious, wonderful, beautiful, organic, nutritious birch syrup. What I'm hoping you can see is when I drill this in, we'll go to about there and the sap starts to flow immediately and that tells you these birch trees are ready. A little bit of liquid in there. What I want to do is clean out that hole so it doesn't clog. See water coming out of there now. You see it's wet, shiny. That's what we're after. Now these are plastic, so I'm careful not to bang on these too hard. I'm waiting to see if something comes out of there. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's wonderful, folks. Super excited. My wife, Dawn, the boss lady, loves birch sap. Makes her a very happy little Alaskan lady when her husband brings home birch sap. And that's why we do what we do, is to make the boss lady happy. If she's happy, we're happy. Secret to marriage. So as promised, this is straight out of this tree. This is the beautiful raw birch sap that comes out of these trees. It just looks like water to you and I. And it's taken about 20 minutes to collect this much into this jar. And we're gonna taste it right out of the tree. Tell you what it tastes like. Cheers. Fantastic. I look forward to that every year. It's cold. You know, it's probably 35 degrees outside right now. It's fresh and ever slight sweetness to it. And it's just wonderful. <laughs> and maybe it's just nostalgia, maybe it's just memory, or maybe it really is that good. That is my superstition. I have to drink the first sap of the year and that gives us good luck for a good birch sap harvesting season. For the next few weeks, this is what we will be doing. We will be collecting and boiling around the clock in an effort to get the beautiful sweet nectar called birch syrup. That's all for today. I have so many good, wonderful videos to share with you about so many wonderful things about our travels, our hunts, our harvests and our adventures around Alaska. There's so many more videos that we have for you. Um, by the way, just in a few weeks, we're headed back to Denali National Park for 10 days of camping in our camper van. And there's a fantastic video from last year, what we saw in the park, caribou, wild grizzly bears, huge moose, and many more things. And we had a fantastic time. Go check out that video because in about three weeks, we're headed back to Denali and we're taking you with us. All right, thanks for watching Living My Alaska. See you soon.